look at this girl here. This is actually a pink-eyed leucistic Texas rat about to lay. Oh, and by the way, welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. You know, we don't have any clubber clutches today. I was just going through and looking at all these amazing animals, like this albino Nelson smoke snake that is in her lay box right now, but there's no eggs. There's also no ball python eggs, but as you can see, we have a lot of colubrid eggs, and these ones are about due to hatch here. Uh, we're going to have a lot of babies. Geckos are still coming fast and furious, but you know, we're kind of getting to the end of the breeding season in the sense of egg production. You know, we got maybe about 30 or 40 colubrid clutches left for second clutches. We probably have about 40 ball python clutches, a few other things and stuff like that. Of course, rainbow boas are just coming up, but you know, I thought today, not only as I'm taking you through this journey of the day, I would talk a little bit about the philosophy of how I run this business because you see me getting all these eggs, but the truth is oftentimes when I'm pulling eggs like this Mexican black king that's going to be laying here in the next week, I'm already thinking about next year because it's important not to just think about this year. Anyone can have a great breeding season if you're breeding snakes or reptiles or any animal for that matter, but when you can string 30 breeding seasons together, now that is what makes a successful business. Well, as you can see, Lucy definitely destroyed her cage and she's sitting in a good spot right now. My prediction is, is that she's gonna be in a good mood today and not strike at all, and she's gonna be a sweetheart. Uh, Jay, on the other hand, thinks that I'm crazy, so we'll see who's right, but she's just she's definitely not in the best spot if she isn't in a good mood. But I think she's gonna be in a good mood, so what do you say we just give it a shot and see what happens? Are you okay, baby? Are you okay, baby? Oh yeah, she's in a good mood. You're in a good mood, right, baby? You're okay. You're all right, sweetheart. We're good. Oh yeah, my baby's in a good mood today. Look at her. I told you, Jay. She's in a great mood. This is the best mood she's been in in months. Uh -oh. uh, here, jump in. Just go ahead, grab her. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Isn't she great? <laughs> Look at how good she is, right? I mean, she is. She is in a great mood. Oh no, she's she's so sweet right now. You like it? Yep, the spaghetti fork move. Okay. All right, you guys ready to get her in? <laughs> she is. Oh, this is our get. <laughs> There you go, girl. Oh, there you go, girl. I tell you what, that was absolutely the easiest that has ever been with Lucy, right? She was in such a good mood. I love having my Lucy back to her old self. Don't get me wrong, I like to have her a little bit cantankerous every now and then because it's a little bit of a challenge, oh, yeah. but. She was, today, she was a puppy dog. I think you could have kissed her on the face today. I was going to do it. You I'll definitely tip the two, that's for sure. Like, <laughs> but is so sweet. <laughs> but now the work really begins. Did you see this cage over here? Yeah, I got to get headed back over. Okay. Super excited uh, to have someone here from, you said from Alabama, Alabama right? Alabama, Montgomery, oh, Alabama. That's awesome. Well, it's so amazing to have you up. Thank I mean, I can't thank you for coming. No, I tell you, her, her excitement level was, uh, it <laughs> made my day. It literally made my day. So thank you so much. I'm I appreciate so it. We've got a lot of stuff to see. We're going to have yes. a good time, all right? Yes, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great. So Eric, you said we have a clutch of colubrids, huh? Yeah, a couple today. A couple? Wait a second, what? Yeah, I know. Kind of surprise clutches. So what? I went in there and I'm like, whoa, man, Which... I didn't put that many mice in there. <laughs> oh my god. So the first one here, so there's you... no box in here. What's no box in here? Dude, you're Lori not doing a box very well. I know, listen, I'm trying. I'm really trying, okay? <laughs> we had a box in there for like a couple weeks, never went, never went, never went. Oh, she's just a little obese or something, and bam, there she goes. There she goes. So, now it's that clutch. Yeah. You can see they're a little bit desiccated or dented. That means we'll pull that clutch right now, get them on some vermiculite. We'll probably put some damp moss on them just to pop them out. They should be completely fine. But that happens, you know. Sometimes you just think, like you said, nice yeah, and big and know. fat. They didn't lay, so we didn't think she was going to go. And hey, a surprise clutch today. You said we have another I like one? That. Right down here. Oh, you're I kidding. think it's an albino Nelson's. Look at that, right on the money. Oh my gosh, Look the same that. thing. Yeah. Gotta start putting nest boxes on I know, these I just, I'm oh messing up, man. 
Okay, well, uh, there you go. All right, well, we got two clutches to pull. Let's get these in. These ones are a little bit more desiccated, so we're definitely gonna have to get some emergency moisture into them to pop up, but I think we're gonna still be okay. Uh, again, that's why it's so important to go through every snake every day, because sometimes you miss a box and you get a clutch on the bedding. Let's go ahead and see what she's got actually going on. She's a really beautiful snake. Again, I'm just gonna pull these eggs aside here real quick just to see what is happening. All these eggs look really good. There's a couple sluggers back there, but for the most part, these guys look like a good clutch. Again, just a little desiccated because she didn't have a nest box, so of course there's no moisture in here. I just want to make sure she's done laying. And, oh, that's okay. My mama, what in the heck is wrong with you? It's okay. Whew. Tell you what, she's definitely upset. So I'm going to just get these guys in the egg box as quick as I can. Mama, it's, oh my gosh, is she fired up? Corn snakes usually aren't that bad, but she is definitely something. Ow, jeez. What are you thinking, you silly monkey? Just trying to get your eggs so that they, they're okay. I, and you can see I sprung a little bit of a leak on my hand right there. <laughs> it's all right, Mama. You're gonna be okay. We'll get these eggs in here. And again, I'll kind of show you what I'm gonna do here. Once I get them up here, I'm just gonna go ahead. First off, I'm gonna candle them. So you've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 good eggs. And then what I'm gonna do after I'm done candling them is I'll just take some of this damp sphagnum moss right here and just put it over the top like that. The eggs are gonna actually absorb the moisture and then they'll pop back out and they should be completely fine. Uh, let's pull that albino Nelson's clutch as well. Onto that albino Nelson's clutch. And again, these guys are laid really nice here in the corner. Should be pretty good. We'll just pull them over here, make sure they're all right. Mama looks really good, so that's good. We'll get her, these guys in an egg box. Again, because these are a little bit more desiccated, we're gonna put a little bit more moisture on them, to be honest with you, just because they definitely need to pop out a lot. So I'm gonna bury them a little bit more in the bedding, kind of put them around, that's gonna help. And then just like the other clutch, I'm gonna just take a little bit of damp sphagnum like this, and I'm just gonna put it right on top of these eggs like this and they should pop out just fine. We'll keep an eye on these over the next four or five days, just kind of continuously. If we had to add water, we add water. If we have to reduce and make a little drier so they don't overwet, we'll do that. But that's just egg management. That's something that we do every single year. But all in all, we didn't think we had any Kluber clutches. It turns out we had two today. Getting back to kind of thinking of next year, take a look at this scaleless Texas rat snake right here. She's actually laid her second clutch already. And you could see she really looks good as far as body weight goes. And that's something that I'm always kind of aware of. You know, you remember when I'm pulling clutches, I'm saying like I'm checking the females out looking how she is because I've got to start thinking ahead You know, it's really easy to kind of be excited about eggs this year and not think about next year The last thing you want to do is take an animal that shouldn't have a second clutch and breed it This particular albino Nelson's here laid one clutch of eggs about three weeks ago And we decided not to rebreed her because we just thought she was a little bit thin And if she put that kind of energy into a second clutch, she would probably be no good next year So I thought to myself, let's give her the rest of the year off put a bunch of food into her and then next year maybe she'll give me two clutches so it's about stringing multiple years together this brooks kings here is another perfect example of that she was a first year female plenty of body weight she laid a beautiful first clutch and we decided not to breed her the second time again because she was a first year animal i knew i could put some size on her and she looks absolutely gorgeous right now and next year she is going to be in great shape so again i do the same thing with all of my animals leopard geckos pythons boas colubrids everything like that i'm always thinking ahead you know don't just think about this year because I've seen so many people that breed reptiles have an amazing year one year and then have a complete flop year the next year. So trying to always be proactive thinking about the following year is what's really going to continue the success year after year after year. So now the work begins. Uh, Lucy definitely destroyed her cage tremendously. We're going to do a complete breakdown of her entire cage, revamp the whole cage, take all the bedding out, disinfect everything, put new bedding in, uh, obviously clean her water up and stuff like that. But uh, it's something that we want to do every once in a while anyway, so it's a good opportunity. She was in a good mood. Uh, let's just go ahead and I'm telling you what, if you guys had smell a vision right now, uh, that is something else. But I will say that someone did send me this strainer, which is absolutely fantastic for getting all the heavy stuff out before we drain it. So, all right, we have our work cut out for us. Let's get started. I came down to just kind of check out and spend a little time with RJ and he came jumping up like he wanted to eat so I have a feeling for the first time he may actually want to feed for me let's see where he's at here Arj oh yeah I think he is uh it's been a year since he's eaten for me so I'm pretty excited about this let's see what we can do all right the moment of truth 
All right, you ready? Oh yeah, he's ready. Here you go, bud. There you go, buddy. There it is. Oh my gosh, RJ ate for me again. I cannot believe it. After a year of him saying, Dad, I don't want to eat in front of you, he is finally eating for me. You want to eat again, bud? You want to eat again? Oh yeah, look at, he's ready. Come on, monkey. Come on, monkey. Ready? There you go. There you go. There you go, buddy. Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. I love it. It's been so long since I fed him that it's it's exhilarating. It's almost like the first time I've fed him ever. Look at that guy crunch over there. Oh my gosh, I love it. And I love when alligators do that little U where their tail is kind of up in the air. Oh my gosh, that is so freaking awesome. So uh, for whatever reason, he didn't want to eat for me for a year and now he's back on food for me. So uh, now we can start some of our training again that I have to kind of abandon because he wouldn't let me feed him. So uh, we'll just keep on trying. Maybe we'll feed him one or two more rats, huh? Wanna try again? Come on, bud. Come on. Come on, up, 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 buddy, up, buddy. There it is, bud. Good job. Woohoo, doggy. That is awesome. So, Lori, what are all these pillows all about? Well, it's actually something I'm super excited about. Is a new event we are going to have at the Reptarium. It is called Reading to Reptiles. Is this that one where kids like read to the reptiles? Yes, exactly. The kids bring a book in, they get to sit right in front of the cage of the animal they choose, and they can read them a story. I'm not, I don't know that I'm that convinced that this is going to work. Do you think it's going to be good? Okay, well, obviously you're not a reader, and... No, <laughs> no I, I've, I've really never read anything. There's I, Audible. I am a, I That's am why a, I have Audible. I, <laughs> true. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I am an avid reader and I loved reading with my kids. And I think this is a great idea because it gives them, a lot of kids are like, eh, I don't want to read to mom and dad, but on the other hand, they love animals. And so they will actually sit and do it. And I've seen different ones where they do it with like dogs or cats and different stuff like that. So All right, so basically the kid can pick the animal and pick the book to read and then the pillows are to sit and read in front yeah, of Yeah, this is so they don't have to sit on the hard floor, they can sit on the pillow and then they awesome. read, take turns reading to the reptiles. Let me know if you guys think this is a good thing. I mean, I'm on the fence. I mean, I'm gonna go with it, but I don't know if it's gonna be any, you know. So let me know in the comments what you guys, would you read to a reptile or is Lori crazy? Yeah, I guarantee you all of the moms out there with younger kids are going to be like, oh my God, this is such an amazing idea. And if I'm anywhere close, I'm going to bring my kids to do it because I talked to several moms at the Reptarium and that's how the idea came to be. Okay, we'll see how this goes. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. So we just shot a really fun video over on Noah's channel where uh, we took Jay, of course, from New Jersey down in Florida. Won't say that too loud. And, uh, yeah, I won't say that too loud. But we took him around and did a bunch of Michigan tasting. We ended with uh, this which is a pasty, which is a, you know, some sort of meat pie. We've got fago, uh, stuff like that. So uh, I'll put a link in the description over on Noah's channel if you'd like to check it out. And I'm wondering, I mean, what's really unique to your area? Let me know in the comments. We have, again, we have fago soda. We have verters. We have all kinds of stuff, the meat pies. We have to try pizza, all kinds of different <laughs> stuff. So we tried a bunch of stuff. Let me know in the comments what's unique to your area and what maybe I'll try if I ever come to your visit area. And definitely check out Noah's video because uh, it was pretty awesome. As I'm kind of wrapping things up here, I'm gonna wrap my thoughts up when it comes to kind of thinking ahead because again, I just think it's important and I never wanna preach to you guys. I just always wanna kind of inspire you to realize if you wanna run a business, whatever the business is, you've gotta be forward thinking. Don't just think about today, but think of tomorrow. And oftentimes when you're breeding reptiles in particular, you gotta be thinking three or four years ahead because you're gonna be like, hey, what animals do I wanna raise up so that they're ready to breed so you can kind of predict what's maybe gonna be popular or something like that. And the other thing I wanted to tell you guys real quick is that I'm trying to continue to kind of lift the veil, right? So that you guys can see what we're doing here. Not just like, hey, I'm just showing you an animal and then the next vlog I'm showing you a different animal, but kind of make it to where you guys understand the whole process of what we're doing here and uh, show you guys again the crew and Lori and all that stuff. Let me know if this is working and if you like the idea. Uh, that's kind of my vision for the future of the vlog is to make it not only, hey, we're going to show you a bunch of cool stuff, but we're also going to take you on the journey of all aspects, not just my my view but everyone around I want to make sure you guys like that let me know that in the comments as for now have a wonderful day I love you guys so much be kind to someone and I promise I will see you tomorrow <laughs>